Tony, I'm going to go over to you now. Um, just let me just get out of this. You put your camera on. Sure. So I must say, Tally sort of slightly sidetracked me because I'm interested in all those similar things as well. I mean, I've got a ridiculous collection of uh, yes. photo opaque pens. But I must say my favourite one at the moment that we're kind of promoting in printmaking is that the Edding 750. In black, yes. It's black and it draws on tracing paper, film, acetate. It's right. really good. They're really black. Okay. I think the problem with them is you can't get them very thin. But what works well are those paint markers that are like gold and silver and white because they're very thick ink. Okay. They yeah. work surprisingly well for for screen printing is what I'm thinking, where yeah. you draw on tracing paper or film to blot out the light really yeah. important i found those zig pens weren't strong enough for what i was doing all right okay yeah but we've gone through all sorts because they they tend to stop making them in general japanese pens are the best i find for drawing for any of these things but okay yeah these um the zigo paint pens are in japan aren't they oh yeah, this is japanese as well i didn't realize really okay uh, Big up the gym. And also, I've got an amazing collection of stencils. I know I was meant to uh, discuss stencils. I never really thought about all these as being stencils as well. Yeah. But, you know, I've got a, my circular stencils get so much use that they're just I've destroyed them. Kind of. Oh, yeah. But if I could show you what I do with them, just because it's not completely. Uh, You know, so I yeah. use them for drawing circles and. Oh, I see. Yeah. There yeah. was a time I would just draw a freehand circle, but I mean, what's the point? It's, uh, it's quite difficult. Yeah. So if I was starting a drawing, um, I'll just show you because I've got some like that. So you know, I draw all the eyes in with um, um, with the circles. Yeah. The circles. Why don't you use a compass? Do you not want to use a compass? To not for something that small. Right. And also, you don't really want pin pricks on your paper. And, no. Uh, no. But yeah, I mean, I've got a nice set of compasses and things like that. I suppose the very the most basic stencils I could think of were, you know, these sort of plastic ones for lettering. Yes, I like those, yeah. I mean, yeah. traditionally, it's for doing the side of packing crates, you know, where they just spray. Um, so, you know, I've got all sorts of different sizes of that. But yes. what it made me think is um, with these sort of stencils, you would use a spray can, spray the paint through, and you get a kind of particular sort of mark. But what you can do, I mean, like you do with a pen where you trace them, you can get a sponge and sponge through them and it will give you a very different mark to a spray paint. And I've got a couple of examples here. So these stencils were made with acetate, cut acetate and sponges. Oh, so okay. That could be done at home. That yes. doesn't use any machinery, any electricity or anything like that. So that's my little face logo that you see come up. Yeah. Little sponges, you know, it's not a big sponge covered in ink. It's lots of little sponges with different colours on them. But they're textile inks. Uh, here's another one. So that was a black one. That's the white one. I'd like to say they're available on my shop, but they're not available. <laughs> they're not available. But you can see the difference if you sp start spraying, because you can combine the two. You don't have to you can see where it fades, and you get a kind of, you know, more graffiti style. There's a look to it that the sponge is much clearer. So this one here, that wasn't a spray. It wasn't a sponge. It was using the screen printing squeegee. Right, pushing ink through. So I mean, you know, you've got your 
stencil materials, you've got your different stencils, you've got different ways of applying whatever it is. Yeah, it's quite... What I wanted to ask you, Tony, was, because um, my mind is in the idea of um, photograms and making stencils to create photograms, um, is there some kind of material you should use to cut them out other than it's something more robust than just thin yeah, carbon? Yeah. I've got some quite good examples, actually. So I suppose the phrases you use with um, stencils are... I've actually got a little book that Jonathan gave me, 3D Jonathan the Technician. Oh, yeah. So yeah. these are full of stencils. Cool. What, they what they talk about is islands. What you can't have on a stencil is an island. So you can't have a bit an image that's kind yeah. of floating in midair. It'll fall out. So I'm just trying to find a good example. Say this kind of wrestler mask. Yeah. So you can see his eyes aren't little dots floating. And what they talk about is you make a bridge. So you never have a, a dot in the middle. You have a little bridge linking it. You see these little bits? So yes, there's a look to it. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know it's obvious, but... That's, you know, that's where Banksy's going to get all his. Yes, yes. So you're cutting out your stencils with acetate and you've got to have a bridge. You can't have any island. What I do in screen, I mean, this is, I really like this stuff. That's quite old. What? Oh, that's that sheet of stuff, it's isn't it? It's photo red, but it's sticky. Yeah. So you get these kind of sheets of it. Yes. And that is photo red, you know, it's yes. um, opaque. So, opaque. Yeah. so you could cut that out in a stencil shape, couldn't you? Well, exactly. So what we've got is this stuff is called amber light lift film because it's an amber colour. Okay. And what you do is you kind of peel it off. So it's mounted on acetate. Now, oh, and it's sticky, yes. It's not sticky, but it is stuck to the acetate. But okay. it's, the bit you cut off is the bit you don't want. So what you do is you cut your design and it leaves it on the acetate. So you can have islands. You don't have to worry about actually, you're not cutting through the material. You're just cutting halfway through it. So I've also got this stuff in green. Um, and there's one in a red called ruby lip as well. Anyway, it's all exactly the same. I'll show you how you use it. Which is... So I'm going to have to um, let's show you some of my screen prints. So these were mono prints where I just sponged ink onto paper. OK, this can all be done at home. This is just ink on paper folded in yeah. half. Yeah. And then I've taken another print from it while it was still wet. OK, and then I've taken another print. So you're yeah. getting very delicate kind of ghostly images. Yeah. And I just suddenly I realized it kind of looked like a rabbit or something like that. Yeah. <coughs> so what I've done is use the film to cut out a background. I've used another bit of film to cut out the foreground. So that is going to make me a coloured block. Yes. Now, ideally, I'd have the print here, but I haven't got the print. I just want to show you a more complicated one. So that was a pretty simple drawing. I do sort of stuff a bit like this as well. Mm. So to cut that out of film... Yeah, it's something like this. Wow. Well, it's just okay. as, compli as complicated as you, you want it to be. Really. How do you cut it with a scalpel? Just with a scalpel, yeah. yeah. And if you make it a mistake, yeah. if you make a mistake, then you can use the film that's sticky to right. repair it. Oh, okay. Or yeah. you could draw it as what you know. You could draw and combine with the film. Yeah. Um, sure, I've got a couple more examples here. 
you know in fact all this work i would have done it at home and then brought it in to print um yeah. you know i've always worked from home in that way because yeah. this could take weeks cutting out this film you know and these are two for the same now i can't remember which colors which but they're going to overlap there's going to be an overlap and in screen printing where they overlap you get an extra color well yeah there's a lot of thinking and a lot of kind of um you've got to hold the image in your head basically while you're working on it so you know several weeks or this is another one where i've cut these backgrounds out anyway You've seen them. I've got hundreds of them. This is really inspiring. I'm quite keen oh, to have a go myself. Yeah. One finished print, just because I'm showing you all this stuff. But, and these are all your plates in the background, Tony. I can see them all stacked up. Yeah, yeah. That's wow. a kind of finished print. That... Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And it's normally two layers of film and maybe two bit, two photocopies. Yeah, that tends to be my kind of. Can I have a look at one of your plates? Okay. Right, let's have a look at one. Just, just one. It's a quarter past the hour. Yeah, I'm afraid these aren't really to do with stenciling anymore. They're transfers. So they were transfers, and I sent them yeah. off. So you just get them back in the post, and then you yeah. rub them down on the plates and fire them. Yeah. That was quite a nice working from home project. Okay. That's really great, Tony. Um, I'm gonna. I'm quite excited about having a go myself. Um, I'm sure I can make use of that photographically with photographic paper. Oh, yeah, that film, really. It's really nice to use as well. It's so accurate. You know, we have to be um, conscious of people, how much it costs and how accessible it is. But, uh, I mean, you know. We, we sell it on the fourth floor. It's not cheap, but. Um, yeah. OK. Well, maybe we, later on, we'll put a, um, in the chat for people. Um, I'll make a note of that. Um, I mean, it's also, I suppose, to balance it is because everyone's got a different direction they're going in. But yeah, the guy, there's a guy in painting. I think he's the first year from Mexico, and he had that show in the gallery at the front where he did a lot of um, stencils. Okay, I remember still that. A little bit on display, and the, he cut everything out of sort of a very thin cardboard. And there is a thin card that's called stencil card. Oh, is it? Um, and it's robust. It block up with ink. It blocks up with ink. Acetate is much better. Okay. Right. But what I was going to say is his work is amazing. So mm. it's you know your own work I think will take you in a different direction. You know it just so happened that my work was very detailed, fiddly. I you know when I found that film I was so excited because it's yeah. so great. I don't know anyone else that uses it really. 